What you see here is my first attempt at the expensive hobby of building a custom keyboard. After a ton of help learning about switches and playing with different board layouts, I finally decided on my parts and I figured I'd bring you along for the ride. Like any deeply involved hobby, there's a lot that goes into custom keyboard building. More than I think I could have ever imagined from the outside. There's decisions to make on the size, the layout, the switches, backlit or not backlit, and of course, the keycaps. I'm not a stranger to mechanical keyboards. I've used a variety of them over the years. All of them were Corsair. Yeah, I know, I can feel you custom board builders out there cringing at me. My current keyboard is this guy right here. This is a Corsair K95 Platinum RGB with Cherry MX Speed Silver switches. It's been a great keyboard, but I decided I wanted something smaller for my desk after I built a small farm factor PC and I wanted to get even more desk space back. After a ton of help from a good friend who's deep in the throes of addiction of board building, I settled on building a GMMK Pro board from Glorious PC Gaming Race. Yes, that is their name. Now that all the parts are here, let's go over what I chose. Starting with the actual keyboard itself, the GMMK Pro. This board is a compact 75% keyboard, which essentially means it's missing the 10 key number pad. I chose this layout over a 65% layout because I'm very partial to the function keys. The smaller boards require a combination of keys to execute function keys. For example, pressing the FN key and then the number one key to get an actual F1 press. I spent a ton of time in Linux consoles and shells and those function keys are important, at least to me. Anyway, the case of this board is made of CNC machined aluminum. It comes in two colors, black slate, which is what I chose, and ice white. The PCB inside the switches will connect to have sockets, so no soldering is required and I can easily remove them to experiment with different switches and customize them over time. The board also has RGB LED elements built in, which of course I'm going to take advantage of. The controller on the PCB works with open source QMK firmware and software, so I can customize the board's functionality using QMA if I need yet another obsession. The board also comes with a built-in rotary knob that by default will be used for controlling the computer's volume and when pressed down will mute and unmute the PC. That's a feature that I use a lot on my existing keyboard and also influenced my purchase somewhat. Lastly, the keyboard has a removable USB-C 2.0 cable to connect to the PC. I still honestly don't understand why the custom keyboard community tends to lean towards USB-C as the connector type, especially for a keyboard. Considering that on most PCs you have very few USB-C ports, but a ton of USB-A ports, why you'd want to consume such a high value port with a low speed device like a keyboard is beyond me. I also purchased a brass switch plate for the build. The switch plate's job in the keyboard is to hold the switches in place, and the material it's made of has an effect on the typing experience. Different materials will affect the sound the switches make when pressed, affect the feel of the switches, and in the case of this brass switch plate, will add more weight to the keyboard. And now, on to switches. The rabbit hole for switches goes deep, and frankly, I spent a bunch of time stressing over what type of switch, the peak actuation force, and the noise level I should choose. There are just so many options for switches, it felt overwhelming. And honestly, it's one of the reasons I chose the GMMK Pro as my first board. Since the PCB of this board has sockets for swapping switches, I felt better knowing that if I ended up choosing the wrong switch, I could just swap them out. Glorious has a few switches to choose from when you buy from them as I did with this board. So after playing with a few different types of switches, reading and researching, and feeling like I was definitely going to screw this up and make a bad choice, I went with the Gatoron Red switches. These are linear switches, meaning that when you press them there's no bump or tactile feel and no sound, just smooth actuation all the way down to the bottom of the key press. They're also relatively light peak force actuation keys at 45 grams. These are very similar to the Cherry MX switches I'm familiar with from past boards. I do plan on buying more switches to experiment in this board, but for now, I'm going to go the safe route. And last but not least, the keycaps. You know, it's funny, out of all the things you can customize on a mechanical keyboard, I'm most drawn to the keycaps. And maybe it's because it's the one thing that can truly set a custom keyboard apart from a generic Corsair and the like. It's the most visible part of the build, and because of that, it's the most creatively expressive part of any keyboard build. Anyway, enough waxing poetic. For my first build, I selected a set of Aura White keycaps from Glorious. These keycaps have an opaque or solid white top, and the sides and the legends are transparent. Since my keyboard is black but has RGB backlighting, I figured having solid white tops would really pop, and the transparent sides would allow that sexy RGB to shine right through. As far as costs go, keycaps tend to be one of the cheaper components to a keyboard build. So I imagine over time I'll buy different color combinations to play around with to make this board even more my own. All right, enough talk. Now it's time to build this thing. Let's get to it.
and here it is fully assembled. Start to finish, the whole process took about an hour to do. This thing is a chonk. Fully assembled, it weighs in at 4 pounds, 4 ounces, and feels amazing. I know it's silly to equate weight with quality and value, but the substance and feel of this board is fantastic. After building the keyboard, I did have some switches that weren't working, and after pulling them, I quickly found out why. When inserting them, I accidentally bent the topmost pin on the switch. After talking with my keyboard buddy, he mentioned that this is a pretty common mistake and that on most switches, that pin is of a thinner metal, so it's more prone to bending. After I straightened the bent pin and reinserted the switch, all was well. The RGB on this board is luscious and so much brighter than the RGB on my older Corsair keyboard. The keycaps with their opaque white tops and transparent bottoms and legends really allow that milky smooth RGB to flow out around them. They look stunning and I can't be happier. The GMMK Pro has software to configure this keyboard, set macros, remap keys, and of course, control the RGB. The first thing I did was head back over to Glorious's website, downloaded the software called Glorious Core, installed it, and started it up. The software is a bit sparse, but it wasn't too hard to use. The keyboard has three layers that allow you to set up different keyboard mappings, macros, and color patterns, and using a key combination rotate between them. The software is comparable to the functionality in Corsair's IQ software that I was using in the past, and outside of changing the RGB lighting, I don't expect to use any of this all that much. If you're the kind of person who wants macros and remappings, I think you'll feel right at home. Also, again, this board supports QMK, so you can use the QMK configurator if you aren't a fan of the software. When I first plugged in my keyboard and it was detected by Glorious Core, it asked to do a firmware update and that finished without an issue. One last thing I wanted to add, I like the switches I bought for this board, but like I said, I expect to experiment and likely swap them out for different switches in the future. I found these guys here. They're called switch tester kits, and they're essentially smaller sampler kits of different switches from different manufacturers. I bought these three kits off Amazon for about $50. It's a cheap way to get a feel for different switches without having to invest in an entire board's worth of switches. We'll put links for these in the description below where you can find them. What's left to say about this? I really enjoyed the process and the result. The board is a meaty beast that looks beautiful, and everyone who's put their hands on it so far thinks it's fantastic. In fact, this whole process has got both John and Brandon's minds going on building themselves custom boards as well. The downside to this is that it's expensive. The whole thing completed was about $270 and some change. That's a lot of money to spend on just a keyboard, so I fully understand anyone's reluctance to get into a hobby like this. That being said, having a truly customized typing experience that is tailored to exactly what I want in a keyboard is awesome, especially because I spend all day on it. Thanks so much for watching this video. We would love to know what you think, so get down those comments and tell us. Tell us about your favorite custom keyboard and the switches you use. We would love to know. If this is the first time you've seen us, subscribe. Do it right now. If you like what we do here and want to be all social, follow us on Twitter and Instagram. And lastly, get on our Discord. It's a great growing community of people who love technology and we'd be happy to have you. Thank you for watching and we will see you again soon.